This is the Mercedes 300D Adenauer, um, launched in 1957 to replace the 300C, which the notable difference being the 300D is what the Germans call a phaeton, so it is six window, pillarless saloon. Um, this particular example, 1960 model, was sold new in Florida to a sister uh, before coming to the UK in the 90s. It, um, fully UK registered, as you can see, it was restored when it came back to the UK. Um, notable features on these are power assisted steering, power assisted brakes, fuel injection, and the same 3 litre engine that you would find in the Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing, um, built to sort of compete against the Bentley S3s and the Rolls Royce Silver Clouds. Um, as you can see, or if you can argue, a far prettier car. Um, like I say, three litre six cylinder engine, column shift automatic, three speed with kick down. Um, this one is available in our upcoming classic auction. We're going to start by having a good look at the bodywork, then we're going to move on to the interior, and then we're going to go for a cold engine style. Starting with the body on this W189, believe one of only six in the UK. It is in this lovely two tone of your traditional Mercedes metallic silver over this beautiful deep claret red metallic. Um, we need to do a little bit more research, but I believe this was the original color. And then it's had the red added again, we believe by its first Floridian owner. Looks very Florida with those sort of two tones. And again, it's aged very well, I think. Starting with the body work, we're gonna start on this front passenger side wing, work our way around. We'll check the body work out. We'll check the chrome, all that sort of stuff. Looking at this front wing, when the paint job was done, you can see it was a lovely, high quality paint job. All of the gaps and the seams all the way around are lovely. There's no build up of paint in there. It's not caked in filler. There's the odd little swirl mark scratch where it's had sponges and, and covers on since. Um, but the rest of that wing is all lovely and tidy. If we go into the arch itself, you can feel all the way around, nice and sharp. All the way down the bottom where you'd expect the rest to start. There is one tiny little stone chip at the bottom there that has been touched in. And another very, very small one just above it. This front right wheel is on the correct spec tire with loads of tread left in it. Nice white wall with the pa painted centers and the chrome hubcaps. We'll do the rest of the bumper as we go, but you can see the side of the bumper on the front here, all nice and tidy. Behind the bumper is good. We've left a little bit of polish there, so we'll ignore that. We'll continue our way down. If you look down this side of the car, you can see it's nice and straight. It's not full of filler. All the panel gaps are lovely, which is exactly what you'd expect from a Mercedes of any era. Got this lovely chrome trim going on the bottom. The rubber that sits inside it is not dried out or perished. There is the odd little pit mark in the chrome across the top there, but the rubber, like I say, is all good. Underneath there, you've got another painted section, which is lovely and straight all the way along. It's not been damaged or rammed up any curbs. And then you can see chassis rails and outriggers and things, and what looks to be a very clean and new looking exhaust. We can see it's not caked and under seal or any, any signs of any rust coming through. Obviously you would expect it to be like that, coming from Florida, nice and dry. Certainly no salt on the roads. This door, all the chrome work, is nice and tidy all the way across. There's a tiny little bit of pitting in this top section, but the handle and the trim across is all very good. Around the windscreen, again, nice. This seal doesn't look like it's dried out or anything like that. It's been a Mercedes-Benz Club owner car as well, which is always nice. A little bit of pitting just in the chrome on the gutter rail there onto the roof. The roof itself, really big, slight curve in it. You would, you would expect it to have the odd dent or ripple, but as you can see on the camera there, all very smooth, very tidy, all very, very good. We'll pop the windows up as we go. Um, all the winders work lovely. Chrome meets as it should, the seals are good. There's no scratching in that. It's got the right stamps in the right places. Everything you'd expect to see. Onto this rear door. Same story. Rolls up nice and smooth. You can see it fits lovely and flush all the way around. It's sort of not got any of the protruding or anything incorrect. On the rear door, there is a small touch in here. And the paint in this section here is just a little bit flat. It wants polished back. You can see it's a bit flat. Don't know if there's been a sort of touch-in or a repair or something there, but it is a little bit flat. And there's a little bit of a run in the paint down the bottom there. And there is a small crack where it meets the footstep on the door, as you can see. 
Amazing how well those doors shut as well. Really, really nice. And the panel gaps, like we say, are lovely. Coming up onto this rear arch, again, you can get your hand right in all the way around. It's lovely and sharp. There's no sign of any corrosion. There's no, it's lovely and solid all the way around. Another good wheel and tire. And then from this side, if we look back up, like I say, lovely and smooth, nice glass-like finish. It's not full of ripples or dents. If we are being picky, there is a tiny dent where that touching is as well. We're being really picky there. All the chrome work on the rear screen is good. I'll show you these windows in a minute. They actually clip in. If you've got up there, I'll show you those in a second. And there's double chrome trim on the rear. Normally you'd expect a bit of moisture to cause some corrosion down the bottom here, but as you can see, all the way along, this one's very good. And then the same story coming up here and where the, the water would sit on the seal. That's all lovely as well. Another look at the roof there. This one's been in long-term storage. It's a customer of ours that we deal with quite regularly. They, they really do know how to store a car. They've got two, 300 cars on site. Really know what they're doing. So it's been stored well in its current ownership. Rear tail light on the passenger side. No sign of any cracks, no signs of any moisture. The chrome went around, it's all very good. Same story on the driver's side. We do have a tiny little mark on it there, but other than that, all good. Huge big chrome bumper in really nice condition. We do have a very small dent there. It's just been pushed against something, but by the looks of it, getting behind that, yeah, it does look like it would push out, to be fair. Underneath, from this side, you can see again, like I said, that exhaust looks nice and new. That rear valent, it's all clean and tidy. And underneath there, you can see the fuel tank. Straps and everything look to be in nice condition. It's been parked here for about an hour as well. You can see it's not dropping any fluid on the floor. Coming around on the driver's side, all the way up there again, lovely and smooth. Rear quarter, we've got a very faint little scratch just there. You can just see it in the camera there. It is worth pointing it out. This arch, sharp all the way around, all very, very good. Another good wheel and tire. Chrome work down this side is all nice and tidy. All the way along, as is the gutter rail on this side as well. Large chrome section on the back again, that's all very good. We'll, uh, we'll check the windows on this side. They're not stiff, they're not tight when you roll them or anything like that. A little bit of a sort of ingrained scratch where it's catching going up and down on the rear leading edge of that one. The glass is all good. And then driver's side window, or driver's door window, sorry. You can see it all sits nice and evenly all the way around. Glass is all lovely and clear. As is the windscreen, there's no delamination or anything like that. The chrome along the bottom is nice. There's the odd little bit of pitting in the gutter rail there. Ignore that, it's a bit of dirt that we've missed. Have another look back down from here as well. Driver's door, it has had a security lock fitted there, but it has been painted in to, to match. So it isn't too noticeable, but it is there. And there's a little bit of extra paint on the bottom of the door on this side, if we're being picky. Can have another look underneath from here. Wish it was dark, but you can see. It's all nice, smooth, black. No sign of any corrosion coming through. Nothing else to note on that driver's door. Under the front wing, we've got very, very faint scratch just there. But that is me being particularly picky. And we've got some pitting on the wing mirror stanchion. Little stone chip touched in on the arch there. A bit of dirt that we've missed, so we'll ignore that. Nice and sharp all the way around this arch as well. Another good wheel and tyre. Colour looks so good when you look at it and the curve of the arch as well. Really, really nice. Both side light trims, and the chrome work and the plastic on both sides. It's all very good, there's no cracks in that. I don't know where you'd find a new one of them, so that's good. The rubber seals around it are nice. Chrome work around the headlights and the side lights on the, on the indicator, sorry, are all very good, you can see. Nice and shiny, there's no pitting in that. Front bumper is in excellent condition, as you can see. As is the grille, really, really nice. That very late 50s, early 60s Mercedes grille. Now it is missing, at this point, the, the mascot. It's not a pressure release or anything like that. It is just purely cosmetic. Screws in here with obviously with the three-pointed star on it. Um, this car has come from a deceased estate. We don't currently know where it is. They are looking for it. Presume it's not with the car. If it does turn up, we will update the description straight away. All the paintwork around the front is lovely, especially around those air intakes. You'd expect some stone chips and things in there, but as you can see, all very, very good. So cosmetically, not perfect, but a very presentable 
Very pretty looking car. Moving on to the interior. At some point in his life, it has had these quite large headrests uh, fitted. They are comfy, they're lovely. For me, they do kind of look a little bit odd with the pillars lying. The whole point is that they're supposed to be at that height. Uh, but not a total deal breaker, you can remove them, it's easy enough. Leather on this passenger door card is all nice and tidy. The wood has a little bit of delamination towards the front there. So that one's done. There's a very good place in Leicester we can give you the details of that can look after you on that one. Carpet set, this lovely red carpet set matching the exterior. It's very nice on the passenger side. All the leather trimming around the outside of it is all very good. The wood on the dash on this side and the chrome, really, really good. I did notice earlier on when you open that, the interior light still comes on, which is a nice touch. It's got its original Becca Mexico stereo. For 1957 technology, dual zone air controls is a lovely touch. We'll get to the steering everything while we get around there. Seat on the passenger side, all the chrome trim and everything is lovely. Carpet down the bottom is good. The red beading is all nice. Seats could do with a bit of a scrub, maybe a leather condition and a tightener, but generally not bad. And then into the rear passenger side again, all lovely and tidy on the door card. Favourite feature on this car for me. You have a pocket here, but you can't see where the join is. Pop that open. Lovely secret little storage thing, which has suede lining on the inside. Very, very luxury. Don't even get that in the rolls. All the door shuts are painted and nice and neat. We've got a little bit of what looks to be glue or something down here where the carpet's been reattached. Door shut down here is very nice. I love this scalloped cutaway for the door, especially with the window. It looks fabulous, doesn't it? Now, as far as the seats go, this is correct. So you should have this braided leather handle and the, the pocket and all the metal fixtures. It is like we say, just the headrests. They aren't actually drilled into the seat. If you notice, they're on a bracket um, that then comes down and fixes onto the side piece. So they would remove if you wanted to. They don't appear to be fastened. No, I can get the hand all the way through. They're not fastened onto the top of the seat or anything like that. So they would lift. Behind the rear seats, you've got this nice big parcel shelf area, which is leather trimmed. All lovely and soft. It's not dried out or cracked or anything like that. Again, testament to the storage for the car. Rear bench. Again, it could do with a bit of a leather scrub, but it's intact. There's no there's no wear or tear on it. It's just, it's just a bit grubby. And the armrest is all nice. Carpet set in the back is lovely. These aren't stretched out or pulled. Headlining, it's a pleated headlining, so they look a bit saggy. It could do with maybe a little bit of tightening up, but it's generally not bad. Into the boot, we've got a full size painted steel with the white wall. It's lovely red carpet again. A little bit threadbare down the bottom there, but the rest of it's all very good. No funny smells or any signs of any moisture or anything in there. We did wash the car a couple of days ago. It didn't seem to let any water in or anything like that. All the seals look to be good. Rear driver's side, and again, you've got that lovely storage compartment. Really nice touch, because again, you can't see where it folds. Maybe I'm sad. Door capping on the back, it's just starting to go at the front there. Just ever so slightly, the rest of it's all very good. This piece is nice. Carpet set on this side is lovely, as is the back of the seat. Same story, just if we get the camera nice and close, you can see it's got sort of a little bit of ingrained dirt. Proper leather clean would give that a really big difference. Nice quick win for it. And then into the driver's side. Again, the wood, the lacquer is starting to peel there. Um, like I say, there is a place in Leicester um, that is very, very good and not expensive. I believe they're about £80 a piece. Um, and you've got four, so not too bad at all. We've got another one of those pockets in here as well, by the looks of things. Slightly bigger, all lined inside. Driver's seat's got a little bit of sag in it, but again, once you've done that clean, if you tighten that up, that will make a big difference. Um, and you can sort of see that ingrained dirt that it will come out by the looks of things. Um, but there is a little bit of wear down there that's worth noting. Not on the bead, just, just before it. All the chrome trim on it is nice. Carpet on the, on the driver's side's got a little bit of wear where your foot would rest. Steering wheel is, uh, it's got a little bit of tape just holding that in place. It wants a new washer, I would presume. But the actual outer rim, which is the hard bit, is lovely. The chrome on the horn ring is good. Horn works as well. This one shows 88,000 miles. We'll detail what we know as far as descriptions and things like that. And um, we'll show you all these gauges working in a second and the starting procedure, which is quite nice. Um, what we'll do is while we're here is we will pop the bonnet. We'll have a look in there. Like I mentioned earlier on, the same three litre injection engine that you would find 
in a 300 SL. So really serious bit of kit. As far as we can tell, apart from the modern battery, it looks to be nice and standard in there. In the wings, everything looked to be good. Look at that lovely made in West Germany's plaque on the back. All of it's correct. So 300D, chassis number 8500158, uh, total weight 5,390 pounds, or permissible total weight, sorry, that's, so that's carry weight, 2,530 pounds in weight, uh, and then your paint codes and things down there. What we'll do is we'll get it fired up. I'm gonna show you underneath first. So you'll see it's not dropping any fluid down. Left it to go cold, so we can show you a cold engine start up. Starting procedure in a 300D, a W189, is ignition on. You've got your fuel pump here. Instead of turning the key, you take your gear selector, push it away from you, and that engages the starter. You hear that engine ticking away lovely and smooth. Nothing nasty coming out the back. I have had it down the road briefly. If we're gonna be really picky, the steering is a little bit vague. It probably wants the tire pressures, maybe a set of tires from them being a bit older. Um, but actually the kick down on the gearbox works. Three speed automatic. If you push your foot down quite hard, it'll kick down like a modern automatic, which is lovely. Oil pressure's up there. Temperature obviously stone cold, fuel gauge, and then the amps all seem to be working fine. So there you have it. 1960 Mercedes 300D, it's a 189, known as the Adenauer, after Konrad Adenauer, uh, quite a famous leader of Germany post-war. Uh, the car is here with us, so if you want anyone to come and have a look at it, let us know. If you want to come and look yourself again, let us know. We're open every day. We can get you booked in. If you can't get up here to see it, again, let us know. We can book you in for a video call. We can send you extra photos. We can send you extra videos. Anything you might need. Thank you.